I grew up in Oklahoma City, Dell City area. Um, I grew up with my mom and a stepdad and about four, my four sisters and a brother and many other people that lived in our house, in and out of our house. Um, my, um, my mom's troubled. She um, is um, addicted to meth or has been for most of my life and um, so that shaped a lot of my upbringing. Um, Whenever um, I was about 12, I, lived, I moved to live with my dad here in Oklahoma City, and he's um, much more stable and much more <laughs> an adult than she is. So most times my mom would be away probably two weeks, three weeks at a time, and so I would, um, my stepdad would be at work most of the day, so I would have to take on the responsibility of getting my sisters ready for school in the morning, and, um, which was often a, a difficult kind of task because um, we didn't have utilities, basic utilities, a lot of the time, so it was a struggle to get them to uh, brush their teeth with whatever water or something like that that we had, um, and get them get them to school. And I most of the time I would make dinner for them, whatever basic things that we had that I could cook. I tried to, um, and that's how a lot of the time was when they were young. Um, I didn't necessarily. Uh, I didn't necessarily regret taking care of them. I, I felt like it was just my responsibility to do that and to make sure that they were provided for as much as I could. How I grew up, it, it just, it, it was kind of natural. It, um, it just felt like my older brother and sister was, weren't going to take on that responsibility. So I felt like it was my job while my stepdad was away to do my best. And that was the least that I could do, was do my best to um, make sure that my sisters were well taken care of as best as I could. Um, as far as noticing that other, other kids my age w weren't or were doing that, um, I didn't really notice because, I mean, I think when you're a kid, whatever you just, gr however you grow up is how you perceive the world and how you think the world is, so. Well, I was very attached to my mom. Um, she would be away, like I said, for three, two, three or four weeks at a time, and she would come home and she'd be clean, and then um, I, the attachment would grow stronger. And so it was rough. It was really rough um, seeing her uh, do what she was doing and uh, be involved with so many a addicts and addiction and, and so be so involved in that and so where she couldn't even be a stable mother for us. and. Um, it doesn't, now it doesn't make me feel hate towards her or um, any kind of, anything like that. I, I just feel more uh, understanding now of how much addiction can impact your life and, and how it can really mess your family up. And so I, I've learned a lot in the past few years about that, but, but I was very hurt um, as a kid um, knowing that, you know, she was doing what she was doing and, and I was very attached to her, so it hurt me more. I've always, knowing my, um, so knowing my older brother and sister and the path that they were taking, not going to school, um, being involved in gangs and, and drugs and, and things, just the same pathway as my mom, I felt like someone in my family has to be able to, to stay on the straight and narrow and be able to, um, you know, go to college and things like that. And I, I'd always seen it on TV and stuff and, and, and no one really ever, you know, encouraged that when I was very young. Um, but I always knew that I had a, a bigger and brighter future than, than what I had seen in my home life. Um, then when I started to see my dad, um, when I was about 12, 13, I started living with him and, and seeing how normal people live and that they, you know, people live with basic utilities, people live with rent paid and they live their lives um, kind of stable and I'd never lived like that before. So then I was able to get into, involved in a program called Sooner Upward Bound and that really catapulted my just drive to go to um, college and receive a higher education. So Mr. Norman Markland came to my school and he um, gave a great presentation on what the program offers and um, who the program is for. And it's for students who are first generation college bound students. Um, and he, um, you spend six weeks of the summer at OU's, on OU's campus and you are able to take college level classes and be able to um, get ready for, for what you will um, see in, in your future um, at a university. He, he really, really encourages students who are of minorities and of um, economically disadvantaged backgrounds to, uh, to just reach, reach as far as you can because he knows that it's hard if you've never had an example in your, in your life of a parent or a grandparent who's been to college before. For a first generation student, it's much more difficult for them to get into college and graduate from college with their degree. So the program is basically just centered on making sure that you have that path 
to be able to get into college and be successful. So they are also very, very, very uh, dedicated to letting you know about as many scholarships and um, uh, funding for college as possible. Um, that's where I learned about Oklahoma Promise and that's when I actually logged on to their website and knew that I was not actually accepted just yet into the program. And then whenever I um, had my dad sitting down with me and fill it out again, I got Oklahoma's Promise. So that's going to cover my entire tuition at OU, which is a big deal. <laughs> and OU also has a program called Sooner Promise, and they pay for your fees. So with tuition and fees paid, that's a big weight lifted off of my shoulders for college. And I think that I'll be able to focus more on my studies, not the financial situation that I'm in. When I started at Northwest Classen, I was very sure that, that I wanted to have a 4.0 GPA. I had taken some honors classes in eighth grade, and um, the, there's about 20 kids at my school who've been on the honors track, basically. And we've stayed together, and we, we, all, we all knew that at graduation we wanted to be um, something you know, that is worthwhile. We wanted to have things that are worthwhile. So my goal was valedictorian when I was uh, in the ninth grade, and it didn't turn out to be in the valedictorian. I'm in third in my class, but um, I've achieved a lot more than what my, my mother and, and my siblings, older siblings have and, and I think that it's just propelling me to go even further and see if I can be the first in my family to graduate from college and um, bring my little sisters through that same track with me to where they are able to not only have the um, opportunities that I had but to where they know that they have someone that they can ask advice of and that they can ask for help and uh, I, I'd love to be that person. So that's, what, that's what's kept my drive up for school. Um, yeah, like since ninth grade, I, I just, I knew that I wanted to be at the top of my class. I knew that I wanted to go to college. So I just worked and worked and worked. And uh, I, I made straight A's all through high school for the most part. I made a B last semester. <laughs> it, it bothered me. <laughs> I, I think that it just, it's just making me reflect on that the fact of being able to persevere through adversity and being able to have resilience and, and see what's beyond, the, what's beyond what you're going through now. Um, if, if I hadn't had the childhood that I had, I don't think that I would be able to have the, the work ethic that I have. I wouldn't be able to have the drive that I have to, to um, succeed as much as I want to. So um, I think that I don't think that growing up disadvantaged is a uh, dis life disadvantage. I just take it as a fact that it's pushing me to work harder. It's pushing me to do more than what's been shown um, as an example to me. Um, it's every single thing that I do as a senior now in high school is just saying, like, my little sisters can go and they can do the same thing and they can go to a university and they can change our family. and. Um, I have a big family, lots of people, lots of different homes that we all live in, but I think that if we can grow up, be successful, we can unify again and um, make, make a way for uh, future generations in our family. And that's, that's really what I want to do um, by being successful. I want to be able to provide for my dad. He works tirelessly um, all throughout the week, probably about 50 hours a week. And um, he does this just, just so that I can be comfortable and, and help me in getting into college, and he's helped me a lot. Um, like I said, I don't hold any hate towards my mom, and uh, I would even help her when, whenever she come, becomes clean and sober. I would love to help her move on with her life as best as I can. So I have a lot of people to, to succeed for, and, and I'm willing to do that and willing to put in the work to do that.